Hey guys, welcome back from Classic Work. We're back here at the Napa store slab. You can tell I've put up the little fascia right there and got it painted. It's looking good. I still got to pull vines that's trying to come back and whatnot. But we're getting into the the more, more gooder kind of stuff here. If you can tell, I've got a bunch of column posts that uh, I ran down. And these are, these things are really cool. These are made by Sturdy Wall. These are SW66s. They're designed to take a six by six post. If you can see, we got them on the trailer over there for a traditional style pole barn. So I've, sorry I didn't show laying out these. It isn't very difficult. Just get you a batter board and a string and pull down, pull square from, you know, two diagonals, or you can use the, uh, the uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared to get your your you know paragraphs theorem however you say that to get your your square basis and then just start making sure all your walls and everything are parallel to each other so we've got a couple of issues um, I don't know if you can tell there is a break in the slab so none of this stuff is level so what I've been doing is I got my laser transit out and going around with the stick and and marking each post to see what level line it is and they're varying pretty big let's see let's just go down here and look real quick so this one if you can read that it's 56 and a quarter okay that's just a base measurement this one here is 55 and 11 sixteenths if you can tell they're falling 54 and 11 sixteenths 54 and 7 sixteenths, 53 and 5 sixteenths, and it just continues on. I think this one over here is like 51 and a sixteenth. Yep, 51. So if you can tell, that's uh, what, four and a half inches, something like that, of fall. So that's our tallest post down there, and this here will be our shortest, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll get it all figured out I haven't done this side yet and I was gonna kind of show you what I've been doing it's real simple it ain't nothing to rack your brain over but uh it's a pretty neat setup laser transit's the way to go when you're working by yourself so I'll show you what I got going on here so basically you have a a extendable ruler and you have a device on the end of it that that can find your your laser more or less and you set it on your post and you can hear all the beeping and everything it tells you where your line is if you got a sustained beep like that let's see if I can get it to do it that means you're level if it sounds like that you're too high and if it sounds like that you're too low so just try to get your, your stick as level as you can find your level Go. Now, you can read this a couple of different ways. If you want to, you can actually read off the grid here. To me, this is not accurate enough. This is good for like doing like dirt work or something like that, but it's not good enough for uh, actual post layout. So what I've been doing is just take you a tape measure, and measure from the bottom of your your foot down here to the top of your device here to get your measurements. I'll kind of show, I'll get an up close deal and show you how that works. Let's do this post over here next. I'll kind of give you an idea. That seems to work pretty good. That ain't the only way you can do it, but that's the easiest way to do it. Two and three sixteenths. It's in between an eighth and three sixteenths. We'll call it three sixteenths. Just write that on your post.
That's all of them. Easy peasy. Works pretty good, I tell you. Now I'm going to get a piece of paper or a block of wood and I'm going to write down every post in its orientation where it is. You know, this is west going back this way. We'll have, you know, more or less a direction given and where all the posts line up and then we'll find our tallest post and then we will make everything grade from, from the tallest post more or less. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so here's our grid now. All right, so you can see how our two corners here, this is west, we're looking to the west. This one's 55 and this one's 56 and a quarter, so they have a difference of an inch and a quarter. So this side, this corner, is the highest side, okay? So what that means is whatever our wall height that we decide to use, doesn't matter if it's 12 foot, 16 foot, 24 foot, doesn't matter. However tall that you're going to go, that's where you're going to set your tallest post. And then you will take whatever this measurement is and you'll subtract this from this. Okay? So what that does is it keeps your top of your wall plate level even though the floor is not okay if that makes any kind of sense so on this corner down here we're going to have it at 16 foot so that one will be 16 foot we won't have to cut any of it the next post that's right here it will be shorter so you take 56 and a quarter and you minus 55 and 11 sixteenths. I'll get my guy to do the math down there and whatever the difference is on that, we'll cut that much off the next post. And the same thing for this one. So you take 54 and 11 sixteenths and you minus 56 and a quarter, you'll take that off the next post. And then so forth and so on. Okay, all the way down. So that's how you keep your, your wall plate level, more or less. Now, same thing goes for this side, okay? So this is our tallest post. You will actually subtract inch and a quarter from this side to keep your wall level this way on the back wall. So, and the same thing, you'll always subtract from your tallest, your tallest one. So 54 and 5 sixteenths, you'll subtract that, whatever that difference is, cut that post. Same thing here, same thing here, same thing there. You just keep doing that all the way down. And that's pretty much everything. If you may notice that the numbers don't line up. It's because we got an extra post in this wall. I think it's this post. I should have drew a circle around it. It's this post right here. If you notice that these two look kind of close, it's because of there's a door that's going to be right here. So we'll have to build a header plate up there to catch the rafter that's going to go across that span so that's why the numbers don't don't sync up if you caught that so there you go that's pretty much a little basics on layout on something like this it's not complicated but if you've never done it it's it can be daunting so we'll uh we'll set up some cutting and stuff like that i don't think i'm going to be able to do that today but uh we will get to that and cut these for the wall and raise them so I got some other stuff going on, but we'll get it going. Alright guys, let me catch y'all up on some speed. As you can tell, we got two corners of the walls here done. So this here is the front of the building. So y'all remember that you know, we laid out for all of our columns. Remember the cheat sheet that I made showing all the differences for the heights. I'll show you how I've been using all that to incorporate how tall our posts are since our concrete is so unlevel. So just wanted to show you kind of what I've been doing. I got it braced off to that building up there where the fascia is. And then we didn't have a good brace on this building so I had to put these big long ones in there to hold them up straight and square. So we'll keep going. Alright, I made a little bit more headway here. I'm sorry I hadn't been filming all the raising of the walls and everything. We got this wall just about done. I lacked the metal 
the uh, metal girder that I'm going to use for an upright right there because we're going to extend this on back that way. But just showing you kind of where we're at right now, I'm going to show you how to build the last wall. Every time that I've tried filming this, I've had a lot of people come and help me. So I'm trying to use my time as wisely as I can so I can't get around to film everything like I like to. But this will be the short wall because there'll be a door right there with ketchup sitting. So it's just going to be two posts. But like this wall, most of the ones that I picked were all three posts. That I could have easily done four, but it worked out that way. So basically, I'm going to show you how to lay this out so you can raise one yourself. So I've got two posts here loaded up on Quavis. Remember our nice board that we made? for our layout for how long to make all of them. So you point this board to the west, like I've got written up here, and then these are all your cuts, and each number designates where you're actually gonna put them. So these two posts are gonna go, let's see, we're gonna skip that one, because this one's that one, and we're gonna do these two. This is the corner post, so we'll wait on it so it's these two's pocket. So if you look down here, these were all the base measurements I took. And you take your 16 foot, which we did on this one, and you'll subtract however much the difference is in between them. So we got one of them, the difference is 1 inch and 15 sixteenths, and then this one's going to be, you can see how it drops drastically, this one's going to be a difference of 3 inches and 1 sixteenth. I think, let's walk over there and make sure that's right, because that's a pretty drastic drop. Okay, this here is where the concrete is separated. So, it may look funny, because there's a rise in it too. You can't hardly see it, but at, at laser level, don't lie. So, we're gonna cut these two posts, and I'll show you how to do the layout on them. Okay, so we're gonna cut the, uh, the long one first. Basically, what you do is you hook on to your post. You go down to 16 foot. Okay. You go down to 16 foot. You don't have to mark it, but it's easy for me. And then you count back what we want. So when we turn the forklift, we want to make the short post here. So we're going to subtract an inch and 15 16 so almost two inches. So you go one inch, 15 16 and that's from 16 foot. So this post will be shorter. Okay. While we're here, we'll go ahead and do the next one. I'm going to mark it to let myself know that we've already made that post. We'll measure the other one. Okay, 16 foot minus, okay, 3 inches and a 16th. So 16 foot, 1, 2, 3, and a 16th. Double check it, 1, 2, 3, and a 16th. Alright, should be in good shape. that one is done. Take out a square, go all the way around the beam. skill saw and we'll make all the cuts.
Okay, ignore this really thick looking beam up there. We had to put that on there when we flew them up. I'll explain that in a little bit. But the middle part, the two by six right there, it'll all stay up there. So, and you can see that these are spaced out. I got these every three feet. And then we couldn't do this when we raise it, but we'll have one that goes on the bottom down here and that'll hold your tin nice and taut to your post afterwards. So, yeah. So you notice that there's holes in certain places. We couldn't raise them all up together because they would get in the way of each other. So I'll have to go back and, and put all the lattice work on there when I get done. And then same is true to take the big beam looking thing off. That's only there for support. So on your layout on these, now, like I said, I've never done this before. So what I've been doing, we know that our top of our plate is gonna be level. And if you look at this one, it's really hard to tell. If we get over here real quick, I'll show you. If you look at this building, look how it, see how it looks like it's dropping? That's because this building is actually on grade. It is not level. It's like four feet and like four feet of fall or something like that. It's something stupid, ridiculous. Um, so if you're seeing that, no, my posts are not unlevel. It's, you're comparing it to the building, which is not. I'm gonna get up there and, in a little while and, and sight it and let y'all see that that sun gun is dead level. So I just wanna let you know about that. So on these, we know that our top is right. So you'll take a tape and you'll pull down one foot and that will compensate for your trusses up there. See how they come down one foot right there? That'll keep you from, from drilling into a two by six because I don't believe you have enough bolt to go all the way through that. Or at least I didn't in my kit. So we'll go down 12 inches. The layout line will be on the bottom side and then you'll go out and you'll mark every three feet all the way to 13 foot. And then We'll do both of them. We'll get two uh, eight foot two by sixes and we'll get ready to put them on and we'll square these posts up and then we can start figuring out how where our layout's gonna fall. So let me get started on that. I'm gonna do the layout first. One foot. Layout falls on the bottom side and every three feet. So we'll go four foot, seven foot, 10 foot, 13 foot. Okay. Go do your other one. Now take your square, go ahead and get you a square line. We'll cut a couple of two by sixes and then we'll square her up. All right, I'm gonna show you how to square up these two posts here. First measurement you take is between the two columns. So set your post in your column kind of loose, you don't want it super tight. Take your measurement from the outside to your inside. We got 98 and 3 quarter. Okay? So the next thing you do is you come down here to your front of your posts. Be kind of hard to see, but pull your tape on the outside of that post and inside of this post, and you line it up 98 and three quarter. Now that's got your parallel, but we don't know if we're square or not. So what you do is there's several ways you can do this, but you have to remember that these posts, one of them is longer than the other. 
So how do you square something that's longer than the other? So what I did was, you'll take your tape, hook it on to your top, because we know our top's flat, run it down to the other end to a known measurement. In this case, I picked 188 inches. So I drove a screw in, 188 inches on the, on the outside of the post. I went down on the other post and I did the same thing. I went down 188, put a screw down there. And then you can pull across and check for square. Basically, wish I had a wide angle lens. in one shot or not. Maybe so. So you pull down and you see what this corner checks out to. This right here is 210 and a half. You do the same thing. I'll walk over there and, and check for square on the opposite side. Let's see if I can do all this in one shot. Say this side could have been 212 and a quarter. So we know that it's short, it needs to grow, so you would kick this end out a little bit. And then you kick that side in just a little bit, that way we keep our spacing right. So I've already gone ahead and squared this up. It took about 15 minutes. By yourself, it's a little tough. So we know that the posts are square with each other. So now we can start putting on our lath to tie them together. And since they're in their hangers, if I can keep everything square. And since they're in their hangers, and our hangers are on a straight line, the wall will be straight with the other wall. Um, if you do all of your foundation work correctly. So we should be in good shape. All right, you notice we only got three. We got two more to put in there, but these are gonna keep running. So we have something to tie into on the steel beam. So that's why they're like that. We've got to brace this one up. So it's gonna be taking the whole load when we raise it up. So that's what this one's for. Alright, I got her braced up. Now this is probably really unnecessary, but we almost had that wall break off, so I don't want to uh, do that again. Alright now, we'll just fire up the cats up. She's all ready to go. Just got to get her down here and get her hooked up, and we'll raise this wall. If you notice, my outrigger is not down on my truck. I got some 4x4s up under there to 
support it. It's a light pick, so it shouldn't have any trouble. It's real close to the truck. So we shouldn't have any issue, but you know how that goes. But uh, we're going to shoot it and hit it, hopefully. Oh, I hope this is a good shot. Alright, that don't look too bad, does it? Alright, so basically, all I did with the forklift is just push it that way a little bit. The way I rigged it, if you can see, I should have put one sling, whoops, sorry. The way I rigged it, I should have put one sling this way, like that one is, and then the one the opposite way, that way they counteract out. But it wanted to lean, so, but I got her in pretty decent shape see that it's not perfect but we may have to move these posts I've been having to move all of them a little bit with the trusses but you can see that that's that's pretty decent they're on the foundation good and flat so and this post is good too there you go it's a little bit off but we'll fix that with a come along and a chain See, it looks good. All right, so now what I got to do is you notice there's nothing to brace to over here, not a single thing. I guess I could brace to the trailer, but I don't want to do that. So I want to run some braces like I did like this. I got to hurry up because it's fixing to get dark on me. But uh, I'll get that done. We'll just take two braces, long ones. We'll screw a couple of them together and 
stick them up there somewhere, screw them down, and uh, she sure will be good for the time being. Then I can work on setting that post, and that's all the wooden posts for the uh, all the trusses. I got to build a header that's going to go right here for the door, but. I can't do that right this minute because I got to be able to get in here and hang the trusses. So that truss that'll go right down through the middle of the guy right here, if, you, if I go 180 degrees, that's this post right here. So that'll be the last truss I put in. I'll probably have to do it from over there somewhere, not where I'm sitting. So I'm going to hurry up and get some uh, braces built and I'll catch up with y'all in a minute. Y'all gonna be able to see this. But you can see the posts. If I can get on the angle right. I'm on the most wobbly extension ladder I've ever been on. I don't know if you can see or not, but they're nice and level through there. I wish my light was a little brighter so you could see it. There we go. But yeah, they they look good. And that side over there looks good too, if you can barely make it out. And that's the wall we put up today. So you can see the X bracing that I got on there and them as well. So probably should have filmed this in the daylight, but I just wanted to show you. That's probably gonna wrap this up for tonight and we'll put on some trusses. Well good morning guys. We got a treat I hope this morning. Once again, <clears throat> I've kind of skipped ahead here a little bit. Guys, I want to apologize for not showing more. You know, you'll notice that all the trusses are up, all the purlins are up, the headers up, all that kind of stuff. We even got first run on. So on the 10, I would have shown more. The big problem with this project is it was a little bit hard to choreograph everything that happened, mostly because I had a lot of help uh, putting everything together and I didn't want to waste their time by me sitting here trying to film and uh, showing y'all exactly, you know, what what went on most of it that i filmed on this project was by myself so yep so today is going to be a fun one i guess it's just going to be highlights in this video from from, the, from from now on we're gonna uh we tried it out yesterday i built a little platform there we're going to take the cats up fly it over the top of the building and set the pile one edge on this uh front face here that seemed to work out really good and then we'll get up there with our insulation here and roll it out we'll set a couple of pieces of tin move down do the same thing just keep doing that over and over again late yesterday afternoon me and dad set the well there's only two pieces of tin and insulation makes it look big but i squared them to the building which was a pain in the butt because i didn't have anywhere to stand but uh yeah i'm gonna quit john we're gonna get after it this should be a lot of fun hopefully we'll see how it goes it ain't as hot as it's been here lately so and I don't know how, well I do know how, I burnt the ever living crap out of my eyes helping a guy with a job the other day, so I'm going to be Ray Charles the rest of the day. So, yeah, I wonder if you, you probably can see it in my eyes. It's pretty bad. It's the worst, worst burn I've ever had, so, alright, let's get after it.
Well, if you can tell, we done made us some shade here. We got the roof on. I still gotta do all the flash and everything to the front of the faults front there. But uh, yeah, guys, I do apologize not showing the flying the trusses and everything like that, and putting the purlins up and putting the insulation down and everything like that. But it's it's been kind of a hectic couple of weeks and trying to scramble and get things done and I'll be honest I got hot a bunch of times and didn't want to film nothing so but we did have an issue this happened Saturday evening I don't know if you can see that piece of tin up there and that insulation all messed up we had some about 50 mile an hour straight line winds or something come through here and it wasn't but about seven screws holding that piece of tin down and it ripped them two up so I got to get up there and fix that this morning but other than that, it held up okay considering how many screws it wasn't in it. So I got to get up there and finish screwing the rest of the deck down before we have another problem. And then we'll go from there. But yeah, it's coming along. I'm going to get up there. Hopefully I'll bring y'all with me. I don't fall my butt off the roof. And uh, we'll get up there and do some stuff. I started putting some more of the lath on. I still got this one to do and I got to tie into that metal post down there you can see this side don't have all of it yet but uh, we're definitely coming along it's looking better and better so let's get after and let's get started let me get all my tools together warning what you're about to see is done by a trained dumbass do not attempt to do at this at home I'll forget my stuff Here's your pro tip. A lot of times when you're working on stored and damage, your boots will get wet and uh, you will fall your happy butt off the roof. So find you a piece of dry concrete, sit there and scuff the bottom of your boots up until they look dry. See, they're still wet. You want to keep doing that till they're dry. It's better to do it on some sunshiny pavement. Because trust me, it ain't nothing like falling off the roof ain't no fun or sliding there you go that's what you want to see and it's bright up here I should have brought my sunglasses
storm damage. That truck back there, you got a load of, I can see it from here, you got a load of debris, like telephone pole and some other sticks. Yeah, it was pretty rough. I lost power back that way for at least a couple of hours. But yeah, yeah, this here is the roof so far. Of course, we're gonna have a stage two. I may have talked about this in an earlier video, but this roof is gonna continue to go out. It's gonna go about even with the back of that little building right there. It's gonna be the same height it is now. So it may be 20 something feet to the ground by the time we get back yonder. So it'll be nice. But yeah, ridge is a little bit crooked, but other than that, it's not too bad. It's actually decently square. The, ed the drip edge is not the best. I'm not gonna say anything about that. Uh, it's not ideal, but other than that, it's gonna be okay. So I'm gonna get all the screws put in today. And then we gotta worry, work on flashing all this goodness. I'll probably show a little bit more in depth about that in a different video. But yeah, get all this wrap back up call it good.